Thank you, Sam. I'd like to welcome everybody, starting with Namaskar, starting with Sam Petroda ji, Aarti Krishna ji, Mohinder Singh ji, George Abraham ji, Pradeep Samla ji, Bhullar ji, Gurdev Hayar ji, leaders on the dais, and dear members of IOC, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome all of you here and wish you happy Onam and happy Ganesh Chaturthi. I was listening to Mohinderji's speech and he was describing in detail what the job of the leader of the opposition is. He said, opposing the government in parliament, he said, not letting them run a dictatorship, and he gave a list of three or four things that are, that define what a leader of opposition is supposed to do. This is true. One can say that those are all elements of the job. But while he was speaking, I was thinking to myself, actually, that is not really my role. Those are maybe my responsibilities. But my role is broader and bigger than that and in many ways simpler than that. And while he was speaking, I thought to myself, if I'm going to speak to people of Dallas, I need to be clear about what my role is. And so I'd like to tell you that I believe my role is injecting the values of love, respect, and humility in Indian politics. I think what is missing in our political system and across parties, love, respect, and humility. Love, love to all, love to all human beings, not necessarily only of one religion, one community, one caste, one state, or to those who speak one language. Respect to everybody who is trying to build an India, not just the most powerful, but the weakest. And humility, not in others, but in oneself. So I think that is how I see my role. And if you were to ask me five years from now, do you consider yourself successful? I would look at these three things. I would say, have I helped bring the idea of love into the forefront of Indian politics? Have I helped make politicians and others, and myself in particular, more humble? Have I, have I increased the respect that people have, that Indian people have with each other? Those would be the values that I would be thinking about. Of course, what Mohinderji said would also form part of my work. Now, we started here with the Indian National Anthem. And while the national anthem was playing, I was thinking to myself that this song mentions all our states. And it mentions them all equally. It does not start by saying, this state is the best, and this state is the second best, 
and this state is the third best. The song basically describes India as a union of states. Very much, very much like the United States. So people say, often people say, oh, we share the fact that we are the two biggest democracies. But we share another very important fact, that we are both union of states. The United States, the United States, whose national anthem we also played, and in our constitution, it's clearly stated, India, that is Bharat, is a union of states. Which means, just like in the United States, no state is superior to any other state. No religion is superior to any other religion. No language is superior to any other language. My brother who's wearing a turban there deserves the same respect as somebody who doesn't wear a turban. We cannot say, we cannot say, look, we don't like him because he wears a turban and we like him because he doesn't wear a turban or, you know, he speaks Tamil so we don't like him and he speaks Hindi so we like him or, yeah, or, you know, he speaks Malayalam so we don't like him. Right? And so Telugu. Right? Because these are, see, when we say Telugu, we are not just saying language. Embedded inside Telugu is history, is tradition, is music, is dance, is food, is everything. So if you say to the people of Andhra Pradesh that look, Telugu is not as important as Hindi, you are insulting the people of Andhra Pradesh. Because you are saying to them that your history is not important, your tradition is not important, your food is not important, your music is not important, your forefathers are not important. And this is the simple battle that is being fought in India. The RSS believes that India is one idea. And we believe that India is a multiplicity of ideas. And we believe, by the way, very much like the United States, we believe that everybody should be allowed to participate. We believe that everybody should be allowed to dream. Every should, everybody should be given space, regardless of their caste, language, religion, tradition, history. This is the fight. And the fight was crystallized in the election. When millions of people in India clearly understood that the Prime Minister of India is attacking the Constitution of India. Because what I am saying to you, union of states, respect to languages, respect to religions, respect to traditions, respect to castes, this is all in the Constitution. Every single word that I have said to you is in the constitution. The foundation of modern India is the constitution. And, and what people understood in the election, clearly, and I saw it happening. When I used to raise the constitution like this, people understood what I was saying. They were saying that the BJP is attacking our tradition, attacking our language, attacking our states, attacking our histories. And most importantly, what they understood was that anybody who is attacking the constitution of India is also attacking our religious tradition. Right? And that is why in my first speech in parliament, you must have noticed when I describe Abhay Mudra, this, the fact that this is a symbol of fearlessness and it is present in every single Indian religion. You can look, you go on the, you go on the internet and you can see 
Every single Indian religion, Guru Nanak Ji holds his hand like this. Shiva holds his hand like this. Every single Indian religion, the hand is a symbol of fearlessness. And when I was saying this, the BJP could not stand it. They don't understand. And, and we are going to make them understand. You see, and the other thing that happened, the other thing that happened that was very beautiful, that, in fact, I was amazed that it happened so quickly, was that fear of the BJP vanished, disappeared. Gone. And we saw that immediately, within, within minutes of the election result, nobody in India was scared of the BJP or the Prime Minister of India. So these are, these are huge achievements, not of Rahul Gandhi or the Congress party. We are peripheral. These are huge achievements of the people of India who realized of democracy, of the people of India who realized that we are not going to accept an attack on our constitution, we are not going to accept an attack on our religion, we are not going to accept an attack on our states. Now, now finally, I am speaking to people in Dallas. And who are you? You are people who have come from India and the values that I have been describing values of the constitution, values of respect, values of humility you carry them inside your heart, you have them in your blood so when you come when you came to this country you did not come with arrogance you came with humility you did not come with hatred you came with love and affection and you did not come with disrespect, saying that, you know, we are coming to America and who are these people? We'll show them. No, you came with respect. So inside your heart is respect, is love, humility. And you are our ambassadors in one way. You're the bridge between these two unions. United States of America, and union of states, which is written in our constitution. And so you have a very important role. Because the relationship between these two unions is going to determine the future of both these unions. The United States needs India, and India needs the United States. It's a fact. We cannot get away from it. So you have a very important role of being the bridge between your old home and your new home. Right? And in my view, you should travel freely between these two homes and you should bring the idea of India to the United States and the ideas of the United States to India. Yes. Sam said that I had promised that I will go to Dallas. And and it's true. But I would like to say that our trip was supposed to be longer and we were supposed to go to New York, Washington, California and Texas and then and Chicago and then we had to shorten the trip and so I told Sam, look, I have promised the people of Dallas so we have to go to Dallas. <laughs> and so we included, we included um, Dallas in our itinerary and I think it was a very good idea 100% we'll come to Chicago love you and we included Dallas and I think it was a very good idea because Dallas is thriving Texas is thriving a lot of technology is moving here and I can see that all of you are doing a tremendous job in raising the flag raising the Indian flag here so I'd like to thank you and I'd, and I'd like to also tell you that it's important that the ideas you carry of humility, of affection, of respect, you spread them between in, in our community here and also among the people of India.
थैंक यू वेरी मच नमस्कार Wow, what an inspirational speech, right? What was your take on point? There was something three main things that he told us to keep and take home point. What is it? Three things. Love, respect and humility. So that's our take home point and next